Making simps is like cooking. Here's one I made earlier! Hey guys, it's Harry from whippedcreamsounds.com here and today we're going to be learning how Medicine designs his chords using Serum and we're going to do specifically his track Daydream. Also, if you didn't know already, I've done a full tutorial over on the website about the music theory behind this, the chords and everything else and you can get all these presets and the MIDI as a downloadable file over on the website which I'll leave in the description box below. Anyway, enough of that stuff, let's get into the first chord and I like to call it the wump chord because it's a whoop whoop. Now the first thing you're going to do for this is you're going to turn on the sub oscillator, you're going to take it down an octave and you're going to choose a saw wave. This will add some underlying grit to the low end and add a little bit of warmth later on. I'm also going to take this back to around one o'clock here so we don't have too much of a signal coming through. Then I'm going to go over to the noise oscillator, I'm going to go to analog and then I'm going to click J106 high pass. This will also add a nice bit of depth and a little bit of presence in the high end. We're just going to push the pitch up here to around three o'clock. Then we're going to take the level up to around one o'clock as well. That's it for this section. Let's move on to oscillator A where we're going to go over to the analog wavetable shapes. We're going to choose basic shapes and then we're going to go over to the square wave, which is the middle wave table position here. Now this sound has quite a lot of detune and we want to bring that in here by popping the unison up to around three. Although it has quite a bit of detune, the automatic detune amount that Serum adds is way too much. So we're just going to bring that back back down to around nine o'clock. Then we're going to take the blend slightly down as well and it just gives it this nice stereo width on this square wave. Once that's all done we're going to pop the octave down a bit and this is going to sing with that saw wave and we're going to have a kind of like squarey saw sub in this sound and it just adds a bit of grit and warmth to the bottom. Now oscillator B is the same exact wavetable shapes. We're going to go over to the basic shapes and we're going to choose triangle this time. Triangle is going to add a kind of marimba -y sound to the top of this sound and as you can hear in the original track it's got a very marimba -y kind of like Caribbean feel and the triangle wave is going to add that. And what we're going to do to this is well we're also going to put the octave up one so we get that nice high register sound. We're going to take the unison up to three, turn the detune down to around nine o'clock and we're going to leave the blend around the same kind of little bit turned down. So now we're pretty much done with all the waves over here and now I'm just going to turn this down so I don't absolutely destroy all of our ears and we're going to take a listen to what we've got. That would have hurt. As you can hear we've got a kind of like nice sound shaping up but it doesn't really sound like the original because the main element of this sound is coming from the filter and the enveloping and we're going to do some crazy magician stuff in a minute. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn on this filter we're going to go MG low 12 and we're going to turn all these on over here A B N S. Someone doesn't know their alphabet. Then we're just going to take this cut off all the way down to the bottom and we're really not going to do anything else here apart from turn the resonance down we don't really want any resonance on this sound then where the real magic juice comes in is envelope one and we're going to turn this one up a little bit to around 130 milliseconds then i'm going to take this decay here and i'm just going to pull it back to around 300 milliseconds i'm going to turn the sustain at around minus 20 db now you can see our shape is starting to shape up how we'd expect the sound to look what we need to do as well is add a little bit of release to this so let's add 160 milliseconds now here's where the real source comes in you're going to want to use this little thing here it curves the envelope and just makes it a little bit more abrupt and we're going to curve it backwards just to have that kind of whop whop then we're just going to take the sustain up a little bit more go to around minus 16 take that back a little bit and boom we've got our envelope let's have a listen to how it sounds without the filter and you can hear it's got that really nice abrupt kind of washing attack and then 
straight away. Now we've got that, we really need to put envelope two on this little cutoff knob over here. So we're gonna turn the filter on and we're gonna really have the almost exact same filter shape with a few slight differences. And this is probably due to me not being very accurate with the decay knobs and like switching them around. They're fiddly, man, you know? So we're gonna take the attack up to around 130-ish. Yeah, that'll do. And then we're gonna to go to the decay and we're gonna take that back to about 450. And then we're gonna put the sustain at about 41%. Now we got this nice little shape here, but we need a little bit of release as well. So we're just gonna pop that up to around 150 as well. Yeah, that's perfect. How did I, boom, bang on the money. Like before as well, we're going to use this little thing here and we're just gonna bring it back so it's got a bit more of an abrupt curve then we're going to add the envelope to over to this cutoff now if you've got your cutoff all the way up it may do some crazy stuff over in the matrix over here where it'll do it both ways like that you just got to come over to the matrix and click this little type thing here with the cutoff we then want to dial this back to around 12 o'clock let's say about 12 30 ish and that is the main basis of our sound this is all the basic stuff being done the next thing we're going to do is add some effects but let's have a listen to it first And boom, we have almost got this sound perfected. So let's go over to the effects and add some stuff in as well. First on the effects list, you're gonna drag this little EQ up here and you're gonna put him on top because he's the best. And we're just gonna take this little uh, low shelf and then we're gonna push this to around 200 Hertz. We're gonna leave the Q where it is and we're just gonna pop this up around four-ish decibels. Yeah, I'll do. Then we're gonna add this high cut on here. We're gonna take the Q away to get rid of that nasty bump. And then we're going to push the frequency up to around 7,000 hertz. What this EQ is gonna do is gonna add a little bit more low-end information, make our sound a little bit warmer, and then it's also gonna cut off some of the high-end information, keeping it kind of like that mid-range sound that we want. Then the next thing we're gonna add is distortion. So let's go ahead and pop this on and it's got a kind of like digital distortion sound underlying this so we want to go to downsample downsample is going to downsample the signal and then we're going to add this back in using the mix knob over here now we want this to be quite subtle so we're going to add around 10 to 12 percent let's just add 10 percent that'll do and then we're going to drive the drive all the way back to what's that on a clock Six, yeah, six. Then we're gonna grab the compressor, turn it on, and we're gonna put the multiband on. Now the multiband is essentially XFERS OTT, and you're just gonna use this as a tone shaping tool to shape the tone of your sound and just bring out certain areas a bit more. It's also gonna compress the sound quite heavily and it's gonna basically push it together and make it sound a bit thicker. Let's go to the threshold and we're gonna put it up to around 26 decibels. We're gonna leave the ratio around four to one. That's where I like it. And the attack is gonna go to around 90-ish. Then we're also gonna go to the release and we're gonna take this back to around 70-ish as well. Now the reason the attack is 92 is imagine your pluck being played. The compressor is basically gonna squash that. So you want the attack to not react on the transient of the sound. So our attack needs to be slow enough to allow that transient to come through, but also slow enough to compress at the right point. So we're going around 95-ish here, and then the release needs to be very short, because if we listen to the frequency of the notes, they hit in quite, a, quite frequently. That means the release needs to recover before the next note hits in, so we're not over-compressing the whole signal. Then we're just gonna make up the gain that we've lost a bit, and we're just gonna put it up to about 5.8, let's go for about seven. And then for the multiband, we're gonna take this up to around 140% just to accentuate the highs. We're gonna take the mid range up to around 166%. Then we're gonna take the lows up to around 165% just to bring in that little bit of low end warmth to the sound. Then the last thing we're gonna to add to this sound is reverb. And of course we're gonna use reverb. We're gonna use a whole reverb. We're gonna to go to the size of about 30-ish percent, 20, let's go 20 to 30, somewhere in between, let's go 23. 
And then let's take this back to around 3.2. Let's put the low cut up. So we're removing all that unwanted mud. And then we're just gonna leave everything the exact same. Now, the final thing you need to do to get your sound sounding like medicine is actually write chords in the same way that he does. And although you may palm this off as not being too important, it is in fact one of the most important steps. The music theory behind it is a lot more complex than these sounds. The sounds are very simple to make usually. So if you're ready to take the the next step to learn that understanding of music theory there's a free tutorial over on the website that explains the exact chords in this particular track the chords that medicine commonly uses it goes over scales and theory and explains them with nice diagrams in an easy to understand way without a load of technical jargon and if you'd like me to make a further video on how i made the intro and also the pluck sounds let me know in the comments below and i will get around to making that other than that, go down to the description and hit the like or the dislike, whichever whichever you felt this video was to you. And then obviously, if you did like it, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, please. That would be fantastic. Anyway, that's it for today. Stay updated and all that stuff. I'll see you in a bit.